you just changed your oil. You feel that satisfaction, right? That little victory? Garage closed, tools put away, hands wiped clean. But what if I told you that right now, as your engine sits there cooling, a hidden sequence of failures could already be ticking, a silent countdown that no dashboard light will warn you about until you hear the knock. It's not the oil you used. It's not the filter brand. It's what happens in the shadows of the job you just finished. According to internal teardown data from a major lubricant manufacturer, the most critical window for your engine isn't the next 5,000 miles. It's the first 72 hours after you turn the key. Get this right and your engine purrs for years. Get it wrong and you're performing a slow-motion autopsy on your own car. Today, we're exposing the eight deadly mistakes that happen after the oil change. These aren't guesses. This is forensic engineering. Mistake number eight, the double gasket time bomb. You unscrew the old filter, it comes off. You wipe the mating surface with a rag, looks clean. You screw on the new one, seems fine. But here's the ghost in the machine, that old rubber gasket. It has a memory and it loves to cling to the engine block, hidden under a film of old oil, perfectly camouflaged. You install the new filter and now you have two gaskets stacked. The seal is impossible. It will leak, but not a gusher, a stealthy, persistent weep. It'll drip onto a subframe or a splash guard, hiding the evidence from you. Meanwhile, your engine is slowly bleeding out. I've seen engines lose a quart every 300 miles from this. By the time you see a puddle, the low oil pressure has already starved the top end. The fix is tactile, not visual. After the old filter's off, run your fingertip around that mounting surface. You're feeling for a raised, rubbery lip. If it's there, peel it off. That single fingertip sweep is the difference between maintenance and a mortgage-sized repair bill. Mistake number five, the dry filter startup wear cycle. You pull a filter from the box. It's a dry, porous husk. You install it. At that moment, you've created the single most damaging minute of your engine's next 5,000-mile cycle. Upon startup, your oil pump must first fill this empty filter, this void, before it can send oil under pressure to the camshafts, the lifters, the timing chain tensioner. For those first few seconds, critical components are gasping. Lab studies call this boundary lubrication, a polite term for controlled wear. You can hear it sometimes, a brief hollow rattle before the quiet settles in. That's metal asking for oil. The solution is pre-lubrication. Before you install the new filter, pour fresh oil into the center hole, letting it soak into the pleated media. Fill it about halfway, then coat the rubber gasket with a finger swipe of oil. Now when you start the engine, pressure builds almost instantly. You've eliminated the dry start. Mistake number four, the forgotten circulation check. You filled to the perfect line on the dipstick. You start the car, you listen, no leaks. You shut it off and drive away. You have just made a critical error. That dry filter we just talked about, it's now full. And where did that oil come from? Your oil pan. Your dipstick is now lying to you. You could be a full quart low and not know it until you're on the highway, under load, and your oil pressure drops. The procedure is non-negotiable. After the change, start the engine. Let it idle for one full minute. This circulates oil and fills the filter. Then shut it off, wait two minutes for the oil to drain back down. Now recheck the dipstick. Top it up to the correct level. This is your only true reading. This two minute wait also reveals any major leaks while you're still in the garage, not on the side of the road. Mistake number three, the dry seal tearing phenomenon. That black O-ring on your filter isn't just a seal, it's a precision gasket. Installing it dry is like trying to close a door with sand in the hinges. As you twist the filter onto its mounting stud, that dry rubber is dragged, stretched, and compressed. This friction generates microscopic tears, flaws you cannot see. They lie dormant until the engine heats up, the metal expands, and oil pressure climbs to 60 PSI. Then those micro tears become highways for failure. The fix costs nothing, a drop of new oil on your fingertip. Gently wipe it around the entire circumference of the O-ring. 
This allows the filter to spin smoothly into place, compressing the seal evenly without distortion. It's the difference between a perfect seal and a pending disaster. Mistake number two, the stripped thread engineering failure. Tighter is better. It's the most destructive myth in DIY maintenance. Your drain plug doesn't seal by brute force. It seals with a crush washer. That soft metal or rubber washer is designed to deform once, creating a perfect metal-to-metal -metal seal. When you gorilla tighten the plug, you're not crushing the washer more, you're stretching the threads in the soft aluminum oil pan. You've just turned a simple drain hole into a future repair nightmare requiring thread inserts or a whole new pan. The torque spec for most passenger cars is laughably light, often between 18 and 25 foot-pounds. That's firm hand tight plus a modest nudge with a ratchet. If you don't own a torque wrench, tighten until the washer makes contact and then give it a quarter turn more. Let the washer do its job. Your biceps are not a precision tool. Mistake number one, the dashboard denial system override. This is the granddaddy of all errors. That oil life monitor on your dash, it's not a simple mileage counter. It's an algorithm in your car's brain tracking cold starts, trip duration, engine load, and operating temperature. When it hits 0%, it's declaring that your oil's ability to neutralize acid and suspend contaminants is chemically exhausted. It's a scientific conclusion. Ignoring it, resetting it without changing the oil, or thinking I'll go another thousand is an act of deliberate self-sabotage. You are driving on a lubricant that has turned corrosive. The metal wear materials in your oil analysis will spike. The viscosity will have sheared down. You are grinding your engine's life away. When the light says it's time, it's time. No philosophy, no exceptions. There you have it. Eight silent killers that happen after the work is supposedly done. This isn't just maintenance, it's the art of preservation. Which one of these mistakes have you been making? Let me know your car's make and model below. And if you think choosing the right oil is simple, you need to see what's on screen right now. The real data on modern oil weights is about to change everything you think you know.